Hello you lovely lot and welcome to my channel. I'm Katie and we're going to take a good look at the Peerless and the Viviva watercolour sheets. And do a comparison to see the advantages and disadvantages over one another. So let's start off with the Peerless watercolours and I've got a brilliant little hack here that I kind of discovered to make sure that you've got a relatively consistent dilution of these and it does advise to do this process as well I thought using a hole puncher and punching out the little sizes of pigment I want would at least give me some consistency there and if you have novelty hole punches that's even better this set of peerless that I'm using is the complete edition. I actually got it from a palette full box which I had noticed was in the sale and I was going to do a unboxing of that but considering Scrawler Box kind of pipped me to the post there by releasing their own ones which we will discuss a little later in the video I thought well let's just bundle them in shall we? Now, one of the advantages of using a hole punch, novelty or not, is I can be a little bit more organised with the colour selection I'm using. Now, obviously this is a swatch and I'm going to do all of them, but perhaps if I plan in advance, you know, I've got a little bit more control of what I use and I don't have to waste any. The colours that are included in the Peerless Complete Edition are Brilliant Yellow, Deep Yellow, Orange Yellow, Ripe Peach, Geranium Pink, Japonica Scarlet, Royal Crimson, Mahogany Brown, Sepia Brown, Light Green, Dark Green, Sky Blue, Deep Blue, Wisteria Violet and Pearl Grey. And I'm actually quite glad that I have two sets of peerless now. The scroller box ones were completely different to these ones, which I was quite relieved about because I'd received these first. With the ratio of one hole punch to three drops, these are very pastel in appearance. Obviously, watercolours do work like that. You have the transparency of them and the whiteness of the paper th coming through, and that's kind of the gist on how watercolours tend to work. At this current stage I was kind of thinking that the yellows were quite similar and maybe that's just a case of perhaps using less water or adding an additional hole punch to the well. My favourite colours out of this little selection here is the geranium pink and the sky blue. There's just something wonderfully luminous about them and that's just on one layer. The sketchbook I'm using is a Sea White Travel Journal. It has 60 pages and 200 GSM watercolour paper. I actually wanted to dedicate a sketchbook to these supplies and supplies that I think are similar in their behaviours, which again I'll go into a little more later on in the video. Once the first layer had dried, it was time to go over again in a second layer, and that is using the same ratio from the wells. Upon application, I could definitely tell which were the stronger colours and for me, the yellows were still a little bit too similar for my liking, but it's not the end of the world. I'd say the one out of the three yellows used, the deep yellow seemed to layer up and was more noticeable. And of course, the final layer of the colour application is literally just neat off the sheet. Yay, I managed to get a rhyme in there. Although it did show a slight difference on the neat application there, the yellows were again still a little similar. But that's not the end of the world, because if you like using yellow, you've got plenty to go out there. And obviously we have an absolute abundance of other colours to mix in there too, so I don't feel too salty about it. I really liked how these layered upon one another as well. I appreciate the fact that they didn't interact too much with previous layers that I'd applied. I get the feeling they have a salt base to them, not too similar to brushos. And I have covered previously how brushos do tend to run a little bit and obviously the salt, that's the main base in there, attracts water and you kind of lose a little control. 
Now, I had a hunch that these were your dye-based type inks, rather than being a true watercolour. This is only my opinion, by the way. And I wanted to see if Brush X would work with that, and we received that in an upgrade a little while ago. And I was super pleased that it did. Now, I know there are other things I can do to test these watercolours and maybe I'm going to have to cover that in another video, so please let me know if you want that. I'd like to see how they interact with salt as well as applying other textures on there. But anyway, swatching aside, the proof is in the pudding as they say, and our pudding is this very painting you see in front of you, which is emerging. I thought a good way to see how these colours would react would be to create a gradient. Obviously the transition of yellows would chef's kiss good, but we'd got some very similar yellows there. I had it merging into that gorgeous geranium pink, slowly flowing into the wisteria violet. I did actually try with the royal crimson in between the geranium and the wisteria, but I, I don't think that quite worked how I wanted it to and I think I could have got away with going straight into violets there but hey it's all part of the exploration process. After those colours had merged into a blue I decided to take that blue and create our character's hair with that colour and whilst I was doing this I wanted again to see if there would be any interaction between the layer I'd previously put down and adding one next to it and I was so pleased that there wasn't. I Really, I know I obviously covered this in the scroll box video, but again at the back of my mind, because of the type of medium this is, I was half expecting those colours to run and go a little bit out of control, and I was quite relieved when they didn't. One of the things about this type of medium, and again going back to brushes and even watercolour pens, you're not going to get a hugely even coat because of how it dries. So if you're after utterly pristine block colours, I think you're going to get away with it for one layer, but when areas start drying before you've completed it, you're going to get noticeable textures on the page. And instead of despairing in that, I thought, well, let's use that to my advantage a little bit. And I embraced it and introduced additional water on the blue of her hair, as well as maybe a couple of other tones of blues, maybe a hint of purples. And you can see that gorgeous texture where the ends of her hair merge into the background. And I liked that. I am still very happy though with how it layered. Again, if you're just doing one stroke of the brush, it's not going to be a huge amount of texture that's created with that. So that allowed me to make it a little bit more cohesive in areas. The sky blue and the deep blue beautifully complemented one another for creating light and dark tonal areas. And I loved how I blended that texture in. Again, it, it just sort of enhanced all those crazy mottly marks that I'd added previously. The Japonica Scarlet and the Royal Crimson were just perfect to do this character's cape with. And once I'd got all of the colours down, it was time to start adding the brush X in there for the highlights. Now, I know you could use some white ink or a gel pen, but the thing is with this type of medium, it kind of comes back to life quite easily and you do run a slight risk of it tinting that white ink or gel pen that you're adding on there. And the same would apply for a Posca too. The brush X for the most part actually really did bring the white of the paper back through and it was really nice to splash that on there as well. So you'd got a random configuration of these white splotches. Now whilst we're on the peerless watercolours here, it would not be fair to not do a swatch and apply the same scientific levels that I did on the first lot. These are the scroll box edition and again there are no duplicate colours. I'll quickly run through what was included but I do recommend you watch that video if you haven't yet. And please forgive my pronunciation of some of these. So the first one's Arlie's Opera. Second one is Jacquemont Red, Alizarine Red, I'm so sorry, Turquoise Blue, Alice Blue, Mountain Green, Peacock Blue, Heliotrope, Ecru or Ecru, please let me know down below, Gambo's Yellow, Bismarck Brown and Neutral Tint. 
I thought I'd mix it up a little bit there by changing some of my hole punches and yes, to a certain degree that is going to change the ratio of colour to ink but even though I'm trying to be quite disciplined here, I also do want to have a little bit of fun too. So for this subject it is a hair and I thought right let's just get the background down again and using the oh I want to I want to say it's, I'm going to call it Ikru from now on and probably I'm saying it wrong but that added a nice glowy background not too over the top and still maintained a natural luminescence to it. I didn't want to draw every single blade of grass so I thought that would be a nice transition between the foreground and the background. Using a more concentrated version of the ecru, ecru, I thought that would be perfect to add a base coat for the hair and introducing some of the Bismarck brown as well as a neutral tint in there for tonal areas. The heliotrope as well was really good to introduce a bit of extra colour in there and like I mentioned with the previous set of peers that I've just gone through, there was no horrible bleeding of colours which I really, really do appreciate and when we get onto the Viviva, you'll know why. I also thought, and again to the previous picture I've just done, these are perfect for doing splatters with as well. I think it's just because they're a little bit more runnier than a pan watercolour or a tube watercolour and it just made the whole process a lot easier. Again going back to using the brush X, it is just perfect for adding those highlights in there and as well using a rigger brush for those fur details where the light was catching. And I must admit, the more I've used these types of materials, the more I've fallen in love with them. There's a certain vibrancy with using these colours and the types of dyes, and I am going to refer to them as dyes because in essence that's pretty much what they are. Just like using the brusho and just like using the Ecoline inks, there is just a supernatural colour to them. It's kind of hard to describe. And maybe I need to play about with them some more to get more of an, a more natural, I guess, colour palette usage out of them. For want of better words, I'm sure you know what I'm on about though. But in general, they really are a joy to work with. Yes, there is a slight unpredictability with them, but sometimes that kind of does me good. I'm overly strict and tight with my painting style sometimes and I have mentioned many a time to try and loosen this style up and I do feel like I did that a little here. I added all of that tight detail in there with the pen but I was a little bit more expressive with my colour use and application of paint here so I, I kind of met myself halfway. And although they might not be for everyone, for me personally that unpredictability, the textures that can be created so far are just lovely. For this next picture, and again I'm still using the scroll box ones here, I thought let's really try and be a little bit more looser and more expressive here. I'd used a liner pen just to draw the foxy's facial details in and the paws and legs of another and I just thought let's just play about here, this isn't a serious picture. It's just something I wanted to try out whilst I got these paints ready. And I allowed them paints to bleed and to move into one another. And that does tend to happen whilst all layers are still wet, not so much when they've dried. I thought I'd use some of those fabulous, gorgeous red tones, as well as some of the heliotrope, just for details. I also found out as well that using blue on the areas where the white is is a really nice way to get some shadows in there without just going straight into using blacks or neutral tints and it was just fun. I just wanted to play about on here and I think these are perfect for it. So the final swatch we have here is for the Viviva colour sheets and in principle they are pretty much the same as the peerless. The upside is I feel they're a little bit more portable and they're not quite as messy. However, the downside was there were areas where, and this is quite an old set, bear in mind, there were areas where I wasn't sure if there was still pigment on the page or not. You'd really have to tilt the booklet to see where the pigment was because it would have a different sheen to it than the, the paper underneath. 
Another downside was perhaps not being able to punch these sheets and extract some of the colours. That's just not possible. Instead, I did do a neat swatch and then for the box next to it, I just dipped the brush into some clean water and then used that dilution as my method here. It, it was quite hard. Although we do still have quite an impressive colour selection here. We have crimson, deep pink, vermilion, dark orange, chrome yellow, burnt umber, burnt sienna, light green, sap green, viridian, peacock blue, Persian blue, violet, magenta, slate black and gold ochre. And again, to a certain extent, the brush X did work, but it did put up a bit more of a fight. I didn't do multiple layers for the swatches either, again, just because I don't think I could have a consistent concentration of colours. So I just did them side by side and thought, well, we're going to do the layers on the picture. Following on from using a bit of a looser style, I went ahead and just used a flat brush for the larger areas of colour and they did layer up relatively well but in my personal opinion I still feel that the peerless were a lot better for that. I did find there was just a tiny tiny little bit of bleeding that I didn't want there especially when I painted a lighter area next to a darker area if you look on the character's jawline you can see where the black that I'd used to, where the shadow was was ever so slightly bleeding in and if you're okay with that then that's fine but I, I don't know as loose as I wanted this to be, you kind of have to have some order amongst the chaos for it to be cohesive. Does that make sense? I do like the fact though, due to the nature of how these are presented, I had to think quick what I was doing. In between drying layers, I'd have to plan out what, which colours I was using next and how I was going to apply them. I do think these are quite good if you do want that loose style and not so good perhaps if you're wanting to be neater with things and again that's down to preference and what your piece requires you to do to create it how you want it to. I did like the colour selection though there aren't too many sim similar colours there which is great I think if you're going to have a whole set of something a bit of variety is not a bad thing by any means however again going back to the slight issues of not being sure where you've used the colours from these sheets, what is unused and what has been used, you've got to move your booklet around a lot and as well I think if you want to use a colour and it's on the other side of the page it's going to be a messy job in that sense. But I suppose for on the go I guess they're okay. My third and final piece combines the scroller box peerless along with the Verviva ones and for the majority of this I do use the peerless because I, I just get on with them better. I'm sorry. <laughs> Again just using a light wash for the background but I covered the whole page this time rather than avoiding the character's face. I thought that would be great for layering up which is what the peerless are good at compared to the Verviva. But I don't want you to think I'm coming all down on Viviva either. That's twice I've rhymed now, badly. I actually want to cover in a couple more videos ways of stopping that bleeding. I'd managed to do that with the brush show using the gum arabic and I'm wondering if I can do something similar with these. But that's going to have to be another video for another time. And of course, if this one does well enough, then of course I will make it. So please be sure to give me a thumbs up just to let me know I'm doing it right. And of course, if you think this is going to be helpful to anyone else, please share it too. Anyway, in prompt you and shameless plug aside there, let's carry on talking about the pictures. So again, really happy with when I wanted it to be vibrant. I used a higher concentration for the blue of her hair. I don't think I quite went in there neat. However, I did go in there neat for her lips and I used the Viviva for the lips there. I really liked the vibrancy there and I thought, well, I'm not going to be painting over that area again. I know the peerless pigments are not going to draw the paint to follow it because of the salt content in there so I was quite happy with that. I also used the same colours to give the character a bit of an outline there too. 
and it was quite nice actually to be challenged to use these colours in a different way. I do feel like I was quite loose here but compared to the last portrait I'd just done there was a little bit more control there and I, I kind of like the balance of everything a little bit more. And I mainly put that down to being able to have a consistent dilution using the peerless and the hole punch method. But when it came to using more vibrant colours, then the Viviva was a lot more beneficial for that. I could literally just scoop it off and pop it on the page. And in general, it was just a lovely painting experience. So I'm going to ask you guys a couple of things here. Number one, do you want me to revisit brushos and the Ecoline inks again and perhaps make this sketchbook into a bit of a series? And of course, these are slightly longer videos, so I'm thinking of adding a Q&A in there. So if you want a bit of a shout out, please drop a question down below that I can answer in an upcoming video, probably using similar mediums to these. Let me know anyway. In the meantime, we're having a bit of a run through of what I'd created here, and it is a learning curve. There's a lot of differences to your traditional watercolours and how you apply them, as well as a vibrancy of colours. As for light flash rating, just treat them like dyes. They're probably not going to last forever, so nothing to be hung up in broad daylight. And that's the best advice I can give you for now. I would do a light fast test, but being in the UK, we don't get a lot of sunshine really, so I don't think it would be very fair. Also, I'd like to know which was your favourite painting that I've done. It would be pretty cool to know and then maybe I can take that forwards into future videos. For me personally, I think the Foxies and the final portrait that I did are my favourite, but hey, we're all different and I still learnt something off each one that I did. And it also made a bit of a mess of my desk. Oh well. <laughs> I just want to say a massive thank you if you've made it this far. Obviously there's going to be a couple of videos on screen I think you're going to enjoy, so why not give one of them a click? In the meantime, I do hope you've enjoyed this and found it useful. And I'll see you lovely lot soon. Bye!